So the other day I was teaching an adult beginner cellist and we were having a hard time to get that first note of the musical piece beautifully done. What often happens, and this is not only with beginners, this also happens a lot with advanced cellists and even professional cellists, including me is that we don't get that first note beautifully as it should be. Well, of course, it depends on the music that you play. We have the tendency to attack the first note, so like this. But instead of that, I would like this. Okay, all good and well, but how do we achieve this? It's actually very easy and it's not so difficult to understand this in theory and to put that in practice. So, okay, let's do this. So, first of all, why do we get that ugly note? And this has nothing to do with the instrument or with the strings or any equipment. Well, in some cases it has to do with it. The reason or reasons are that we are just using a too big movement. That can be too much arm, or we have a stiff hand, or we just smash the bow on the string, as in the examples that I showed before. So with the points that I just have mentioned, let me show you some examples so you can have a clearer picture of it. Was there any example that you liked? So that is what happens if we use that kind of motion. So these kind of movements, two big movements and just, you know, going brutally. So before we're gonna find a fix for that, let's do an exercise together where you don't need your cello. So we, not, we need only our bow, okay? Let's try to find a different camera angle so you can do this together with me and you have a better picture of it. Okay, now we are without the cello. The cello is right here on the floor. So here we are with the bow. What I want you to do is take your left hand, put it at the tip of the bow here, and with your right hand, well, you just take the, norm, the bow normally. So relax it, hold it dead, and just put it there, like that, all right? Now, the exercise goes like this, and this is an exercise to develop and to understand that these two fingers they must be flexible, but in the meantime, also under control. So, first step of this exercise is like this. We are gonna push both hands. So we're gonna push with our left hand over there, right? And with the right hand, we want to push over there. So actually we are pushing like this. So we want to push. Can you see how my index finger goes? Do you see? and everything relaxed, so no stiffness. Let's push, okay? So that was number one. Now we're gonna do the opposite, so we pull. So we wanna go there with our left hand and with the right hand, we wanna go there. So now we go like this. Can you see how my pinky is moving? So my pinky, can you see? Okay, now I want that you push, pull, push, pull. So like this. One, two, three, go. Push, pull. Push, pull. Push, pull. Make sure that the thumb is on its position so the thumb doesn't move around because or else this is gonna happen. So push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Okay? So this is a good exercise. I know it's a, a ridiculous exercise, but this is an exercise that I learned when I was a kid in order to get control of these two fingers here. Okay, now we're gonna do another exercise together. So as you can see, I have the cello right here with me. Let's now find a beautiful gesture. And maybe we need to find a motion as we would draw a circle, right? So you take a pencil and a paper and you draw a circle, right? So this is gonna be more an exercise for the wrist. So we take the bow and we start to imagine that we are drawing circles with a bow. See? Because like this, you're gonna avoid this, you know, going vertically into the string. Because by doing this motion, you're gonna sit and dig into the string. Can you? 
you see how the sound gets different when we go vertically like this and when we use a beautiful gesture. So that's why it's important that you do that kind of movement first, not playing on the cello, as you would draw circles with a pencil on a piece of paper. Another movement that you can imagine is if you have pets, a cat or a dog, it's like you are taking care of it. So you give care to the animal. You're not just going to slap on it because he's going to scratch or bite you, right? So very gentle. You're going to treat it very gentle, right? Like this. Unfortunately, I don't have pets, so I'm going to use just my other arm. I'm going to give care to myself, which is weird. So very gentle. Like that. Can you see? Good. The more you do this kind of exercise that I showed you, the more you're going to understand the gesture, the motion and so on. I know it's very ridiculous, this exercise that I gave to you, but trust me, your cello is going to sound way different when you do that. And remember two things. Although sometimes we have misunderstandings with our instruments, so we have ups and downs, sometimes the cello doesn't want to sound, and we get angry, but always we want to treat our instrument with care, as you would treat your animal with care, or your wife, your husband, your kids, and so on. And second of all, always use imagination. Imagination is very powerful. Okay, so with the tools and information that I just gave you, let's try it now with our instrument. So first of all, we got this motion. Can you see that? And now let's apply it to an instrument. So let's take a random string and let's go dig in the string. Can you hear how it's vibrating? It is possible that you will not get that same sound as I just have at your first shot. So immediately that you will get this beautiful, round, full, completed sound. For some of you, it can take a little bit more of time, but be patient. You know, once you have it, it will never disappear. Cello is like this. It needs time, it demands effort. So please, I ask you, be patient. So if you understood this in theory and you are able to put this in practice, so as I told you in the beginning, maybe you will not get that beautiful sound immediately, but the more you do it, the better it will get. And once it's there, it will never disappear. So that's the good news. So, all right. So in today's short lesson, you have learned how to produce a beautiful sound and tone when you start to play any musical piece. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are not subscribed yet, and share this with groups, communities, and share this with your friends for those that need this information. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful to you and I'll see you in the next video.